Get right to our first text question coming in from the doctor. Uh, I was reading that African Americans account for one third of hospitalizations for coronavirus. Uh, is that true? And what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, well, it is true. And, you know, these numbers should not be overly, a, 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 you know, overwhelming because one of the things that we know is that the, the people who have uh, COVID-19 who have the highest risk factor are it seems to occur in African-American uh, patients. So, you know, diabetes, hypertension, um, those are kind of things, obesity, that really affect African-Americans disproportionately more than other folks. So it's not surprising that you're seeing that the risk is much higher than that. So you, you, you briefly mentioned some of those conditions. Um, is it, is it African-Americans? Is it, is it some lower income people? It's not just African-Americans, right? Absolutely, Walt. You know what I would like to say is that coronavirus is, you know, there it, it doesn't really discriminate, right? You know, it's an opportunistic killer. So if you have effects by genetics, your economics, and your behavior, all those are risk factors as well. So mm -hmm. those folks who, whether they don't have to be African-American patients, who suffer from diabetes, who suffer from heart disease, who have a lower immune system, who have rest underlying uh, pulmonary problems, they're going to be at risk, just like anybody else. But what we're seeing, Walt, particularly the increased deaths that we see in African-Americans in the inner city, is really reflecting the social determinants of health people who don't have good resources, mm -hmm. don't have good education, where the medical uh, type access to care is not as good. So really this is highlighting that we do have people who have problems with getting food and transportation. All of those things are impacts and what we're seeing is a higher death rate in African-Americans with COVID-19. All right, uh, Tom, the next one coming in, and, and this is controversial for sure. It's about the peak. We keep hearing about the peak in California, the peak nationally. Uh, the text coming in is when will this coronavirus infection peak in the Sacramento region and throughout California? What does the peak mean? Does the peak last for a long time? Explain. Well, well, we've talked about this a lot of times, that the peak is really when we see the highest incidence of cases of COVID-19, the highest incidence of deaths and hospitalizations with COVID-19. You know, every time you pay attention to the TV, every time the news, it's been shifting. A lot of these predictions of what the peak is going to be are based on models that really have started back from when this all began. But what we do know that all of the efforts that have happened that started earlier with the social, the mitigation process, with social distancing and isolating and staying at home, all of those things seem to have flattened the curve. Now, we don't know when a specific the peak is. When we talk about the peak, one of the things to remember is we're gonna know when we're at the peak or close to that peak, when we see that the number of cases that we see is starting to decrease in terms of hospitalizations and deaths. Then we would see that we're on the other side. But again, while well, those things take time, it's a shift, right? So yeah. these, the higher the peaks have happened in different, are going to happen in different places geographically across the country. So here in Sacramento, for instance, you know, this was purported to be our week to watch from last week and now. So we're continuing to see that until we know that we're seeing that the, the number of cases start to decline, the number of hospitalizations, the hospitalizations decline, and the deaths start to decline, then we know we've kind of hit it and we're on the other side of that peak. Okay, if Sacramento does have a peak, and I'm sure it does, uh, when exactly that is, is, is kind of what we're talking about. What should everybody do or continue to do if we are at or near peak? Right, I said it before. Think about that. If it's the peak, it's kind of, think about it like the halfway point. Mm -hmm. If that was what you've been doing to you got to the halfway point, you're going to have to continue after we see this decline, you're going to have to continue to do the same things for a longer period of time. So whenever that peak seems to happen in our area, which is to happen in different areas of geographically across the country, you're going to have to look at, once you know that you're on the other side of that curve, the downside of that curve, you really just have to continue to do what you need to do to predict it. Because if you don't, if you just go back to doing business as normal and saying, oh, we're at bound, the downside of that peak, if you do that, you're likely to see what a resurgence of that. And that's what we're most concerned. So the, we have to continue to do what we're doing, social distancing, you know, the uh, isolating, uh, tracking cases, uh, de still testing people that have symptoms so we can look at how we track people to find out where we are on the curve.
Yeah, everybody's anxious to get the back to work, back the economy going again. But as you mentioned, you do that, you do run the risk of uh, everybody going out and about and reinfecting and infecting, and it, it could right. get uh, messy. Okay, next right. one coming in, Tom. Uh, there will be at some point a, a vaccination available for coronavirus. Would this possibly be something that would be incorporated into a normal flu shot that we get annually, or might this be a separate shot? Well, Walt, of course, we talk a lot about uh, vaccine. I would think that if you're talking about when is this going to be over, it probably would be over and everyone have uh, comfort in knowing two things, that there's a vaccine available and there's a very rapid test that everyone would be able to take, those two things. But right now, the hope is that, you know, we don't see a resurgence of this in the fall or later. So we need to really push for an all, a lot of efforts going on to getting a vaccine but it's likely that vaccine will be separate. Okay. So it's not going to be a combination vaccine shot. It may be that that vaccine's given around about the same time once it's developed as we do the typical uh, flu vaccine. But, but again, we have to have pause and patience here because it takes a long time really to test a vaccine and then bring it to market so everybody else can uh, have access to it. Yeah, it if we're, yeah, if we're lucky, it'll be available uh, next fall. Uh, for this upcoming season that we're going through right now. Okay, more.